Hi, welcome to this lecture on cloud computing taxonomy. This is the second of a two-part lecture in cloud computing. My name is Professor Don Patterson. Let's start by reviewing what our definition of cloud computing is. We're, we're, I'm using a working definition of cloud computing that is one of several things. It is an infrastructure, an architecture, or a vision that reconfigures computing from what it used to be as a consumer product or a capital investment, and it changes it into a utility or a service. What do I mean by this? Well, if cloud computing were electricity, a capital investment would be buying a generator. And if it were a utility or a service, that would be using electricity through an outlet. On the one hand, the left side, you have complete control over the electricity that's being generated, but it takes a lot more cost and a lot more maintenance. On the other hand, you can use electricity much more cheaply and easily, although it's out of your control when you use it as an outlet. Same thing happens with cloud computing. Rather than buying a server, like you would buy a generator, you're just gonna borrow a server that's made available to you from a company on the internet temporarily, who will bill you in increments of minutes or hours, depending on how much computation you're using. It's a lot easier to use a computer like that, a lot less work, a lot less cost overall and the cloud computing company gets the benefits of economies of scale by providing this service for many, many people. There are a lot of different visions of what cloud computing is though. And I wanna break it down into four different kinds of ways that cloud computing is used and envisioned. The first one is as a consumer vision. This is a company that uses the cloud and doesn't want you, the consumer, to really realize that it's, um, it's being utilized. A second kind of vision is a services vision, a vision where it's clear that you're using cloud resources, but they're, they're, the focus is on delivering a product through there. The third is an infrastructure service. These are services that are uh, geared towards developers, developers who want some control over portions of the computational infrastructure, but not all of it. And then finally, cloud machines, which enable you to completely borrow a computer in the cloud and take responsibility for the software, the engineering, the security, everything about that virtual machine, yet you're only borrowing it. So let's take a look at the first one, the consumer vision of the cloud. I have a couple examples of that. So I wanna draw out an example of Apple Music Match. Apple Music Match is a service that, that will take music files that you own and will allow you to store them in your music player, so Apple Music, and it will upload those files for you to a centralized place so that you have access to your music that you have in files from all the different devices that you own that are connected to the same account. And the way this works is by using cloud storage to hold those files for you and then downloading them on demand when you want to listen to that song. Your movies, your music, your television, all those shows are always there and always available on every Apple device. Consumers don't know how it gets there. They just know that if they own a song, it's available on all of their devices. It's all backed by an Apple data center. And sometimes it, if you look into the network and it looks like it might also be um, backed by sometimes Amazon and sometimes Google. And now that this music's in the cloud, you don't have to worry about syncing your devices. That was something that we did in the early 2000s. We don't have to worry about disk space because the songs that you're not currently listening to are stored in the cloud and removed from your local devices. And you don't have to worry about backups because Apple is backing up your music for you by keeping a reference copy in the cloud. This isn't streaming. What you should think of this as is your own private streaming service, a collection of music that you own that Apple manages for you and delivers to you when you'd like it. All right, so this is a consumer vision. You don't really realize that there are cloud services there, although if you do dig into the um, interface, you can see that there is a column in Apple Music that'll show you exactly the status of where it is, particularly when it's in, when it's in process of being uploaded. Another consumer vision of cloud computing is Google Drive. So what we have here is a Google Drive that's been integrated with my desktop computer. And the way it works is that I have a folder on my hard drive and it is mirrored to my Google Drive in such a way that 
it appears that my hard drive is basically infinite. Whenever I, just much like the music in Apple Music, whenever I want a file, Google Drive will download it for me and make it available to me, keep my recently and frequently used files on my local machine, but the official copy is located on the, on the cloud. A lot of services are available that do this, um, Dropbox being an example of one as well. But the basic idea being is that you connect it to your computer so it looks like an infinite hard drive, utilizing resources in the cloud. Infinitely large hard drive that never crashes. Consumers don't have to know where that data is kept. In this case, it's all backed by a Google data center. And any data that you need is available on demand. And caching, keeping your frequently ac accessed files locally, helps support that really fast access. All right, another vision is a services um, model. This is a model where we're pretty clear that we're using cloud resources, but we're gonna use apps and we're gonna work through our browser in order to access them. You know, the, the dominant paradigm for this is the Google Workspace model. An organization that purchases a subscription for you, or maybe you purchase your own subscription, so that you have access to Google Calendar, Google Drive um, in the cloud, not connected to your hard drive. Gmail, chat, all the different services that Google makes available, and that tend to um, you know, come and go, new offerings, things that are popular, um, stick around. It's a suite of collaborative business apps, all run through your browser, email, calendar, word processing, spreadsheet, PowerPoint, chat, etc. You know you're using a cloud service because you know if you're not online, you're gonna have trouble getting access to those resources. Nevertheless, there doesn't appear to be any significant limit on storage. There's no ads. There's no software updating. There's no security management. And there, there's rarely, if ever, any downtime because all of those heavily engineering focused tasks have been, been taken care of for you by cloud computing engineers. Again, all of these services, the software included, are backed by Google's data center. They're always on and as long as you've got a browser, they're accessible to you. Another example of a services vision is TurboTax Online. For many, many years, the only way in which you could use tax preparation software was by getting a CD, or even earlier than that, floppy disks, where you installed a native application on your local computer. Well, now, with the advent of non-transient browser applications, with the increased connectivity and the power of our browsers, it's possible to run full-featured applications like TurboTax online. But when you run TurboTax online, you're very aware that you're using a cloud-based application. You need to open your browser. If you're not online, it's not gonna work. If you have connectivity problems for some reason, um, the application stops working as well. Nevertheless, you can prepare, calculate, file your taxes, not have to worry about backups, don't have to worry about hacker break-ins, assuming TurboTax is doing their job, and it's all backed by, I don't know whose data center, someone's data center in the cloud. TurboTax um, removes that complexity from you, so you don't have to think about it. Again, always on and available from any browser um, as long as you can get on the internet. Third vision of the um, cloud computing is an infrastructure vision. This is a vision where we're gonna provide, companies will provide some services on the cloud, but it's not in an application format. It's building blocks so that you can make your own application. Maybe, maybe, you're, gonna maybe you're doing something like Apple Music Match and you need the components on the cloud to build that will come to an infrastructure services provider in order to get those resources that you need. The, the dominant one that I interact with is Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services has grown enormously over the last five years or so. This is an example of the management console that you get presented to you if you work with their, if you have an account with their web services. All these services are pay as you go and they're completely separate from the Amazon.com that sells products. It is, the same, uh, it is the same infrastructure that's powering their website, but they're making that available to consumers through this infrastructure cloud services model. Just to show you how many different cloud services they offer as infrastructure, just scroll down for you and then we'll scroll back up and look at one. Here's one, EC2, Elastic Cloud Computing. This enables you to rent a computer. You can create a computer in two minutes, 
You can use it for as long as you want and then shut it down. You pay by the minute. Here's another one. Uh, auto scaling Tomcat environment. Tomcat is a Java based web server. Um, it has some capability to be able to scale up automatically so that if you have a very unpopular website one day and a very popular website 24 hours later, the infrastructure will expand the resources needed in order to handle all that load if you build it correctly. Tagline is easy to begin, impossible to outgrow. You pay by the minute. Down here, we have a little bit more sophisticated uh, application. This is Elastic MapReduce. This is a framework that's available on the cloud that enables you to create data flow processes that compute on massive data sets. This is the technology that Google uses in order to build their search engine. Again, you could just borrow it for a little bit from Amazon and pay by the minute. Another infrastructure vision that's available is a company like Heroku. Heroku is a company that runs on top of Amazon, takes their infrastructure services, puts them together for you, and does some value added on top of it, and yet is still providing an infrastructure. What is that infrastructure? Well, it's an infrastructure to run web applications. It's particularly um, optimized for release engineering. And by that, I mean it does a really good job of updating a web application anytime you make small changes to it so that you can get your code out to the world quickly. So it enables you to create web applications with a separation of concerns um, and enables you to build that on demand. So concerns being things like the application server, the database server, the asset server. Finally, it integrates source code repositories so that you can continuously deploy. It's very fast deployment um, so that you can get your code to market quickly. Again, it's pay by demand, pay as people are using it. Finally, as an example of the fourth vision, a cloud machine vision, uh, I would uh, point to Linode. So Linode is one of many companies, uh, sorry, it says Heroku at the top, but it's actually in Linode. Um, Linode is one of many companies that will give you a computer temporarily. Amazon will do this too, but this is Linode's bread and butter. They will enable you to rent a computer on demand or clone an existing one that you have. The difference is that you're responsible for all of the administration. You're responsible for the security, you're responsible for the software update, you're responsible for loading and passwords and everything. Sometimes that's what you need. Again, you pay by the hour for this kind of a machine as well. So in summary, cloud computing treats computing as a service and how that service is realized depends on who the user is. Now, I don't, I don't know what your household is like, but in my household, I do 80% of the grocery shopping. My wife does probably 80% of the cooking dinner at least. And I kind of noticed that in the grocery store, you can get garlic in a lot of different ways. And I think you can make a pretty good argument that garlic in the grocery store and cloud computing kind of have this parallel. And what I mean by that is if you go into a fully featured grocery store, you can get garlic in any stage of preparation that you'd like, just like you can get cloud computing in any stage of preparation that you'd like. Cloud computing on one end has just a machine that you're borrowing, and on the other end has Apple Music Match, a cloud service that you don't even realize is a cloud service. Well, for you go into a garlic, you go into a store to get garlic, and you can get garlic growing in a little planter to give as a gift. Or you can get garlic dried and hanging in bulbs. Or you can get garlic not, not tied up in bulbs, but separated into, um, you know, separated into individual bulbs packaged for you. Or if you don't like that, you can buy it peeled and separated into cloves. Maybe that's too much work for you and you'd like to buy it minced. So you'd like to get it all chopped up. You don't want to have to do the peeling of it. Well, maybe minced isn't fine enough. What you really want is you want it crushed after it's minced. Okay, that's fine. Oh, if you don't want to do that, that work, let's just get it mixed into the um, garlic herb butter. Well, let's not even prepare that. And oh, you don't even want to do the butter. Well, let's just buy the garlic bread with the garlic butter already spread on it. In the same way, cloud computing can be achieved or you can, you can purchase cloud computing services at any level that you want. Prices vary, quality varies, of course, but it's like my obsession with garlic. 
cloud computing similar. Hope you get the point. Thank you for your attention. Hope this helps you to understand a little bit all the different ways in which cloud computing is used and why I have such a broad definition of what it is. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.